Hey, welcome to Food for Thought. Let's see what's on the menu for today. Looks like we'll be learning about the cheesesteak. All right, let's bite into it. The cheesesteak is known far and wide as being the sandwich of Philadelphia. It's about as Philadelphian as Ben Franklin, the Liberty Bell, and the Philly Fanatic. This savory sandwich has made many appearances throughout the years in film and television. But who was the one that created this iconic dish? It was none other than Philly natives, Pat and Harry Oliveri. Back in the 1930s, these brothers owned a hot dog stand in South Philly. One day, Pat was hungry, but was tired of making hot dogs. So, he chopped up some steak and placed it on an Italian roll with some grilled onions. A cabbie saw him eating the sandwich and asked for one. Pat made him one, and while the cabbie was eating, he said he should only be making these instead. And that's exactly what he did. Originally, the sandwich only had steak, bread, and onions. Provolone wasn't even added until a few decades later from Ridge Avenue manager, cocky Joe Lorenzo. Meanwhile, the signature whiz appeared shortly after in 1952 at the Oliveri's restaurant, Pat's King of Steaks. Now, don't think the Oliveri's were the only ones making these sandwiches. One of their biggest competitors is just across the street on the other side of Passion Gab, Gino Steaks. This rivalry has been going on for over half a century and is still strong to this day. Both places are open 24 hours and have similar prices. Their friendly rivalry is so well known, in 1999, Dr. Phil went to Philadelphia to film a segment called The Cheesesteak Wars. Now you gotta do this at the same time and then you gotta be honest. Alright, we're gonna do this on three. One, two, three. many hilarious interviews that you can find of Frank Oliveri and Joey Vento just talking smack about each other. But let's keep in mind, Pat's and Gino's aren't the only well-known cheesesteak establishments in Philly. Most Philadelphians consider these two places a tourist trap. They would say if you want a real cheesesteak, then avoid these two altogether. Go to a better spot like Max's, Jim Steaks, D'Alessandro's, Cleaver's, Sonny's, Tony Luke's, John's Roast Porks, Campos, Steve Prince of Steaks, or just stop by your local poppy store. But if you're rolling in cash, stop by Barkley Prime and get their $120 cheese steak. Now, normally when you eat a cheese steak, you'll have a nice can of soda. But at Barkley Prime, you'll automatically get half a bottle of champagne just to wash down your meal. Now, this is what the Barkley Prime cheese steak is made from, but what about other places? Many Philadelphians consider a cheesesteak as a work of art. Each shop has their own preference in cut and style of cooking. Hell, some people won't even step into the establishment if they don't hear the clinging of metal spatulas on the grill. Meanwhile, others consider it blasphemy to slash the meat even more, tampering with the consistency and flavor. But these businesses all agree on one thing. Never, and I repeat, never cook frozen or processed meat. Avoid it altogether. It's okay to refrigerate it in order to make the slicing easier, but never freeze it. Also, don't go near the prepackaged supermarket meat. Each cheese stick is a piece of art, so treat it as such. Now, across the board, the bread is almost always an Omarosa roll. It must be a nice, medium-sized bread that is crunchy, strong enough to hold the ingredients as well as soak up the flavor without becoming soggy. Ugh. Next up comes the cheese. Personally, I'm a provolone person. The sharpness of it mixed with the sliced ribeye is delicious. It's also considered the traditional choice for the cheese steak. However, the iconic look is the whiz. The market is so strong that one quarter of all cheese whiz is sold in the tri-state area alone. Meanwhile, the true neutral between the provolone and the whiz is the American white cheese which half of all sales from this cheese is sold in the tri-state area. Never underestimate the people's need for cheese. 
Then the onions. You only really need one kind of onion. Yellow onions. White onions for a cheesesteak is meh with the flavor. Ideally, you want to dice them and saute them until caramelized. But you can also cook it together with the meat too. Just don't mince them or serve them raw. The only crunch from your cheesesteak should be the bread or certain toppings. Speaking of which, there are plenty of toppings to choose from. Traditionally, you could place hot or sweet peppers, fried onions, ketchup, or sauteed mushrooms. But it doesn't have to stop there. Some people even place lettuce and tomatoes, bell peppers, mayo, hot sauce, and marinara sauce. Because of this, it shows that there are many different variations you can make to make a custom cheesesteak. Even though there are some different styles of cheesesteaks, there are some... Frankensteins out there. Philly food critic Holly Moore tells us a story when he was in California. Anytime it says Philly in front of the name, don't get it. They're pretenders if they have to use the word Philly. I stopped trying cheesesteaks throughout the country when at a California farmer's market they offered me the choice of toppings. Bean sprouts or avocado. Now, as a foodie is a bit of a health nut, all I have to say is why? I've seen some weird cheesesteaks researching this video from pizza, lasagna, dumplings, poutine, and even an egg roll. They all stay in the same premise of sliced meat with cheese and peppers, but bean sprouts, ugh. Well, this isn't the only weird thing that happened with this meal. One politician was in hot water for his odd request of a cheesesteak. Back in 2003, presidential candidate John Kerry had a bit of a blunder in Philly when he requested his cheesesteak with, wait for it, Swiss cheese. <laughs> I know, I know, you're probably saying to yourself, Swiss cheese doesn't seem like a big deal, but that the man just has a preference, which is fine. And cheesesteak aficionados would have let it slide, but Kerry did something unexpected. When he was given his cheesesteak, he took the smallest of nibbles. After this, there was no love for Carrie in Philly. The photos spread around the world and his credibility melted. It also didn't help when Bush was campaigning. He said he likes his cheesesteak was wit, which is the customary way of ordering a cheesesteak in Philly. Even though a few days later, it was revealed that he actually ordered it with American cheese. Even with this big blunder, Carrie was still able to win Pennsylvania, but lost the election. So tell me, how do you like your cheesesteak? I love mine with some provolones, onions, peppers, and mushrooms. Do you get yours whiz wit or whiz without? Do you know any good cheesesteak places? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. You know, food for thought.